Hey guys, this is John. I'm playing Magic Magic Knight 722 in the 15 minute pool on ICC. Let's play E4 on this one. Just checking their stats real quick. Lots of games played by this player. Uh, almost 4,000. Peak rating of 1931. Um, hmm. Let's play. Let's play something different other than an open Sicilian. Um, I could play a closed Sicilian. I could play a Smithmore Gambit. Let's play a Smithmore Gambit again. This is always fun. I played this one other time in the 15 minute category and I had success. Let's see if he takes the pawn. A lot of people just decline it with knight f6 or d3 here. He declines it with e6. Okay, not a move that I'm aware of in this position. Well, let's take the pawn and get a good center. They can play d5 now and we establish a, a French-like position. But after e5, it's an advanced French where black has inserted an early capture on d4. I don't think that's to black's advantage. So, yeah, let's go for it. It's weird how openings can kind of morph into one another. So, check. yeah, I mean, by the looks of it, we're in a French rather than a Sicilian now. Bishop b4, check. Okay, I'll just play knight c3. I'd rather get him to try to take on c3 versus me playing bishop d2 and offering to trade the dark square bishops. I think it'd be advantageous to have the dark square bishop when he has not. So... Also, I mean, since he's kind of stumbled into this line, it appears, he might not be aware of, like, what black strategy usually is in the French. Like, in a French advance, usually black doesn't try to get the bishop out here early on. Uh, sometimes they do, actually, in C takes D4 variations. Um, but it'd be rare. Okay, so Queen A4 check trying to win his bishop is just met by knight C6, and he defends the bishop. So let's play bishop D3. This is a good post for this piece. I'm expecting castles. After castles, I can play knight f3, and uh, I'd actually perhaps be threatening bishop takes h7, the Greek gift. So let's say castles, knight f3, if they just casually play knight c6, maybe bishop takes h7 is good. It'll have to be calculated. Okay, let's put the knight on f3 to defend this pawn. The trap has been set. Let's see if they walk into it. Castles queen side, or castles king side, rather. Check. He takes voluntarily, okay. So we've got the two bishops plus a strong center now. I think the opening has gone swimmingly for us. If queen a5 threatening the pawn, I could just play bishop d2. Place bishop d7. I think he's aware of the threat. I think he realizes that um, bishop takes h7 could be an issue. I can make an attacking move like h4, trying to pawn storm on uh, the king side. Or I could just castle. Castling maybe making a little more sense. Hmm. I don't know though, maybe I want to play h4 and then like put my king on f1 versus castling. Because h4 is kind of attractive in that uh, I gain space on the king side, I start a pawn storm, and I might have a rook lift like rook h3. I could play bishop a3 right now too to try to get on the diagonal, but he's going to play queen a5 is the thing, hitting the bishop, hitting c3. I guess I could play queen b3 then, but somehow I think I want to wait on moving the dark square bishop. Hmm. Let's try h4. Just curious how he's going to respond. And also I think my king will be plenty safe on f1. If I castle, it's hard for my rook to do much in the short term. Like where's it going to go? e1? where it's just looking down a blocked file anyways. So this idea of rook h3 to g3 is kind of nice. If he reacts to h4 by playing like h5, that would be great because I obtained like this open file to use. Looks like he's kind of just pursuing a queenside plan, like probably knight a5 is in the, in the cards for him, trying to attack this pawn. I could keep pushing with h5. He'll probably play h6. Uh, King f1 could be played right now. It's prophylaxis. It's not a bad option. 
I think their plan is just knight a5 and trying to get into c4. Go king f1. We'll stay flexible. I'm expecting knight a5. I think that will be played. Maybe I can sacrifice the c3 pawn. This is kind of dead weight to me. I mean, it's not a good pawn. Um, it does support the center, but there's not enough pressure on d4 where I even really need it. So I kind of just want to attack and pitch that pawn altogether, but I don't know if I can justify it. Probably I should play bishop d2 or something. Bishop d2, knight comes into c4, maybe just rook to g3, although there's knight b2 then. Hmm. Eh, a little bit annoying. I think I'm going to try to sack that c3 pawn. At least for now. What about bishop a3? Rook takes c3, bishop b4. But they don't even have to take on c3. They might just put the knight into c4 anyways. Another idea is rook h3 right now. Rook takes c3 and then knight g5. Threatening stuff on h7. And also, like, maybe um, discovered attack ideas on this rook. Like, knight takes f7, bishop g6. I'm not sure I get enough for the rook that way, though. Okay, let's play h5. I'm thinking they're probably going to play h6 against that. Just put a stop to the pawn. He does. Rook h3, rook takes c3. Hmm. Bishop b2 maybe then. Okay, let's see if they take that pawn on c3. This might be a little unsound, but it looks interesting and uh, I just want to open lines. So if rook takes c3, he does take it. Bishop b2 maybe just to back the rook off. Or I could play rook g3. That was the other option. Maybe rook g3 is better. Yeah, I think I like that a little bit more to start. Rook takes d3, I'm not running into any... i got to be aware of like bishop b5 ideas, trying to skewer my queen and my king, for instance. But it's not a concern yet. So let's just do that. King g1 can always be played if I need to get off of uh, this diagonal. I was just trying to avoid a scenario where I have this bishop on d2 and he has a knight on c4. I didn't like that. My bishop is pretty poorly placed there. Also, there was that knight b2 dilemma as well. Should uh, my bishop d be on d2 and his knight be on c4? His opening was very shaky, but he's actually playing pretty well now. Like, starting with maybe bishop d7 on move 9. His last, like, five moves or so have been pretty good, I think. So if king f8, defending that pawn, my thinking is like maybe I can play bishop b2, force this rook back, and then readjust with bishop a3. Okay, a6, clearly trying to threaten rook takes d3, queen takes d3, bishop b5. No doubt about it. So let's just sidestep that with king g1. This is useful. I'm actually kind of happy to see that move. I think king g1 was a move I wanted to play anyways. 
And he took a little breather from having to address the king side and making that move. So I'm not unhappy about that. Also, it puts another pawn to light square. His dark squares are going to be weakened even further. That bodes well for my dark square bishop. Okay, and then king f8 makes perfect sense. Defending that g7 pawn. Now, do we play bishop b2, let's say rook back to c8, and then bishop a3? That was my thinking. You can bring the knight into c4 then. Another way to play this position is knight h4. It'd be nice to pin this knight though, because like if knight h4, he might go knight f5. But knight h4 like kind of x-rays this undefended rook, doesn't it? Also, maybe bishop d2 becomes an, a thing. Yeah, actually, I kind of like that. Maybe knight h4. Another idea is queen g4, trying to attack g7 in doing so. Okay. Let's try it. Hard to say where my knight was going to go otherwise, so might as well assign it to do something useful. So if knight f5, probably I would take it with the knight, and then pawn takes, and then probably bishop d2. He's going to play bishop b5, okay. Looking for a trade. So if bishop takes b5, he's going to take on g3 is the thing. But what about queen g4 right now? Threatening g7. If... Rook g8, and there's bishop takes h6 ideas in the air. Hmm. I don't know, though. Queen g4, rook g8. If bishop takes h6, they can probably just take on d3. And even though I take g7, the king runs to e8. Maybe it's nothing. Hmm. Queen g... Okay, I'm going to play it, because it looks correct. So rook g8... I can play bishop h7, too, but then rook takes g3... And I could take with the f pawn or the queen since my queen is under attack. Eh, something about that position doesn't look promising though. So after rook g8, I'm going to face a pretty tough decision with my six and a half minutes remaining. How to proceed. He's just trying to simplify, trying to induce trades of like the light square bishop and the rook. Bishop takes h6 would be really nice, but I think unsound. Rook g8, bishop takes h6. Oh, you know what? He can just take back. His rook on g8 is defended by the knight. I forgot about that. Okay, so scratch that plan. That's clearly not going to happen. I'll need a backup plan. Bishop h7, rook takes g3, maybe f takes. Let's go with f takes. Rook h8, threatening the bishop. Yeah, I don't know, then I, there's not a lot of good squares for it to retreat, though, is the thing. Maybe I just got to be practical here and play something like bishop takes b5, rook takes g3, f takes g3, a takes b5, bishop a3. 
and just go for a pin on this guy. That might be the way to do it. Yeah, I think so. Let's do that. I don't want to hem and haw for another couple minutes and find myself in serious time pressure. Now he's got to take on g3. I like the idea of taking with the f-pawn because it opens the file. So, yeah, let's do that. And after a, b, he is up a pawn still, but bishop a3, I mean, my coordination looks superior to his. Yeah, okay, let's bring the bishop in. Soon I might be threatening, like if I can get my rook to f1, that's when my threats are really going to snowball because I'll be threatening stuff like knight g6. I mean, I can almost play knight g6 right now. Knight g6, pawn takes. What if queen takes e6 then? That would be interesting. Knight g6, pawn takes, queen takes e6. Let's say knight takes a3. Um, h takes g6. Hmm. Not sure if it's quite working, though. Knight g6, h takes g6. I can throw in a check on f1 first, but I think that kind of helps him, actually. So knight g6, f takes g6, queen takes... Knight takes a3 is consistent, but then h takes g6, threatening queen f7 mate. King e8 might defend, though. Very annoyingly. <laughs> so bishop e4 is the move that I, I kind of want to play, but bishop e4, he's going to play king e8. I somehow feel like he's getting out of that. This is, a, this is a key moment, because if I'm winning after knight g6, I'm obviously going to go for that, but i just not sure. Um, knight g6, f takes g6, queen takes e6. Knight takes a3. h takes g6, king here. Oh, that's so annoying. <laughs> queen f7 does nothing, king d7. Too bad. Because really, I think bishop b4, um, they're going to play king e8. It just sort of looks like they're going to escape. Maybe I can play a4 then, open a second front. Decisions, decisions. Hmm. Two minutes, 45 seconds. Got to make a decision. Hmm. Unbelievable that they can defend after that. But it appears to be the case. Bishop b4, king e8. I just I don't see a lot of good follow-ups for me after that. My knight is horrible. Bishop b4, king e8, a4. Knight c6, though. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna Check. do this, and I'm gonna 
try to get compensation, but I, there's one line I'm not sure about, which I think I quoted. Um, F takes g6, queen takes e6, knight takes a3, and after h takes g6, this move king e8. Um, I'm going to try to use this time to think, but I just I was worried that if I just played bishop b4, I'm, I'm going to like get nothing and lose on time. So um, let's... Okay. I can also play bishop b4 now, maybe. It's too slow, I think. Okay, let's do this. Knight takes a3, rook f1, check, king e8. Or knight takes a3, I think h takes g6 is what I was mainly looking at. But again, that king e8 move. Looks scary for black, but yeah, I think I'm I think I'm just bluffing here. Hate to play this way. <laughs> I really do. See if I can find anything on his time, though. Maybe knight takes a3, rook check, king here. If I check f7, he's just running to d7. His knight covers everything Not seeing much, even still. Knight takes a three, rook f one check, king e eight, rook f seven. All right, I'm gonna try this. I'm gonna try this, but I'm really not sure about it. Well, I don't think it's any good, I guess is what I'm saying. <laughs> if queen d7, I have rook takes e7, and then queen takes e7, queen takes g8 check. It's not enough, but it's something at least. Maybe I can pick up a bunch of pawns with check. If rook f8, I can take on g6. Although that's that's also losing. <laughs> you can even take on f7 then, I think. Yeah, I'm just coming up empty there. So we're going to be hoping for a swindle now. Going into swindle mode. Okay, so he's actually allowing this line. Check. Check. Because if king d7, I can take on d5 with check. Check. So at least I'm winning with some pawns now. Hmm. Yeah, after I take on g6, I'm only, only going to be down one point of material. One minute, 11 seconds versus his 430-ish. And I have two strong pawns in the center. Okay, this is not looking so bad suddenly. Yeah, he had better ways to play that. Um, all right, let's take. This knight is pretty poorly placed. I mean, if it moves, he loses b5. So maybe I can capitalize on that. I might want to play king h2 sometime soon, just to safeguard my king. 
Okay, suddenly I'm thinking this is not so bad. B4, yep. Okay, let's hide the king first of all. Just tuck it away. I'm not exactly sure how to proceed, so I figure this is a good way to start. Just guard against any perpetuals and whatnot. Let's give a check here. Check. Uh, queen d7, though. Queen d7, I have queen here. Threatening the knight and also threatening to come into g8. Tricky position for both sides. Yeah, let's come here. Threaten that knight, threaten queen g8. So knight takes d4, queen g8 check, king e7, queen takes g7. If king e6, I have queen f6, and this pawn is going to become a force. Yeah, I mean, if I win the g7 pawn, this g6 pawn is only two squares away from promoting. Okay, so he's just going to... Yeah, but I can win check. this now with check. Check. Yeah, this pawn's going to probably promote, honestly. Check. Check and just g7 next move. Um, yeah. If knight e3, threatening mate on g2, queen d6 just wins. Force a queen trade and then promote after that. And I got plenty of time to do it. Check. Yeah, this is the... Most surgical way to do it. Check. Queen trade with check. Yeah, and he's not in time. Wow, what a turn of events there. Queen d7 wasn't good. Move 24. I think he could have just played like rook f8, I believe, was the move. Um, we'll go back and take a look at it, though. Check. Let's give a check. Just tidy this up. Completely winning now. Bring our queen over, hit both these pawns. Yeah, I feel for the guy because um, it, it looked a little scary. Like, not going to lie. It looked like white had something, but it was just all smoke and mirrors, pretty much. I never I never had anything dangerous there. Just a few threats that he had to sidestep. They were threatening queen c7. Checkmate. And he resigned. All right, so I think we stole that one, but let's go back and have a look. So started with the Smith Mora. I think if Black's going to decline this, probably D3 or Knight F6 is the way to go. Um, both are playable, but E6 he's allowing me to take and establish a big pawn center. He does strike back after D5, but now it's basically just uh, an advanced French where Black has captured on D4, which, as far as I know, is like not a good idea to capture on D4 that early. Check. So Bishop E4 check, Knight C3. I was happy with the position check. I got. He took voluntarily on c3. Okay, let's put the engine on right around here. So bishop d3, d7, I think, is a smart move, because if he castled, there's check. this Greek gift idea. Bishop takes h7, check. And it's good to be able to recognize that pattern check. Um, with the bishop and knight and queen coordinating. Because after check, for those of you who don't know the Greek gift, the idea is that after you sacrifice the bishop, jump up with the knight check, you come in with the queen, and you're threatening mate on h7. And if rook e8, the only way to defend against mate, I can 
Oh yeah, I guess in this case I can check, but oftentimes you can take on f7 first, but check. like this is winning because I have bishop a3 pinning the knight and queen h8 is is coming unstoppable threat. So he I believe recognized that. Otherwise, he might have castled because castling looks like such a normal move. The only other line that must be examined in the event of that Greek gift idea check. is like sometimes after check. an hg5 check, their best move is just to come out to g6, like king g6. But here, I can play moves like queen g4 is one of them, threatening discoveries, like knight takes e6 check. Um, also, h4 looks like a pretty good move, trying to go h5 check. And the king is is really running out of good uh, squares to um, defend on. Basically, I'm going to harass it wherever, wherever it goes. So he delayed that. He played bishop d7, and actually not even delayed, just did without castling altogether. That's a very French-like idea. Maybe I could have conducted the attack better. Um, h4 was creative, but uh, not unusual for this opening. Like often white will play king f1, king g1, and try this rook lift idea in French positions. Computer says just castling, or knight g5. Knight g5 is interesting. Threatening the h7 pawn. What's the follow-up? If h6 kicking the knight, you respond with this, and the h-pawn is pinned, so he can't take. Meanwhile, we're threatening queen takes f7. And g6, and then put the queen back on h3. Okay, I can see why this is appealing. Black has weakened their queen, their king side even further, but I don't know. Knight a5 is a suggestion, and I don't think I have a breakthrough per se. But that was something I could consider. But instead, h4, and as I said in the game, I think he played this phase of the game pretty well. Knight a5, he just didn't commit his king, and instead just took the sacrifice material that I offered. Now take on c3. If he had taken on c3 a move ago, rook takes c3, after h6, the dark squares are going to be further weakened for black. Computer seems to think maybe this is okay for him, but yeah, his, his dark squares are pretty sketchy. Also, my knight can come up to g5, and it can't be pushed away with h6. So I wouldn't have minded this. And, you know, I want to sacrifice the c3 pawn, or at least I thought, because I didn't want to slow down the pace of the game. I felt like I had a little initiative going. And I have the two bishops and more space, so I wanted to attack. Um, but uh, in retrospect, it just might not be the best idea. We'll see. h6. Mm, computer approves. Rook h3. Because I really felt like if I played bishop d2 to defend this pawn, he gets his knight into c4. Um, this bishop is is awful, the bishop on d2, and also he's threatening knight b2, attacking both of these. Yeah, the computer thinks it's about equal. So I went rook h3, he took rook g3. Oh, interesting, and he can actually take on d3 right away if he wants. Take, take, exchange sack, knight f5, attacking the rook and defending this pawn. Rook g4, knight c4, with some compensation, maybe? Although the computer prefers white. I think the way he played it was more logical. But as I said in the game, I didn't mind, a, mind seeing a6, even though it does enable this bishop b5 idea. And he is threatening rook takes d3, queen takes d3, bishop b5, skewering my queen and my king. Rook b1 is decent now? Yeah, I suppose so. Kind of keeps an eye on the b5 square, also assigns the rook to do something. What did I play? King g1? Also appears okay. King f8. And here queen d2 would have been strong. Why? Queen d2 threatening the rook. So what if he comes back here? Queen f4. <coughs> Excuse me. Queen f4, and I'm x-raying that pawn on f7. Am I threatening anything significant? Maybe rook takes g7 someday. King takes g7, queen f6. Certainly not right now. What if he just plays a move like knight c4? Knight h4 trying to come into g6. Hmm. Yeah, this is a lot like a French winnower, where black gives up their dark square bishop early on, and you can often attack them on the king side, specifically the g7 and f7 pawns, but uh, if black sits tight, they can they can hope to defend. Suffice it to say, it's a it's a dynamic position now. I played knight h4, but that appears to be wrong. Queen d2. Queen d2 is not a natural move, at least for me. 
but I can see the value of trying to get the queen to f4. On um, maneuvering my queen to g4, it might just turn out like in the game, like my queen and rook are just redundant on those squares. Maybe I want one major piece on the f file, one on the g file, versus having two on the g file, because he can just play that rook g8 move to reinforce. So instead I played knight h4, and then bishop e5 is a good reply. Queen g4, rook g8. And for a while I was thinking about this move, but it took me a bit to realize he can just take back. He doesn't even have to take on d3, he can just take back because there's no queen takes g8 mate. He's got his knight defending. <laughs> Although even here, bishop g6, that must be losing somehow. For a second the computer said bishop g6, 0 0.00, but that's got to be wrong. So I just took on b5, he took, I took with the f-pawn, the computer says queen takes is better. Hmm. I don't know, I felt like f takes might be better just to free up the f-file for my rook. But as I said, I really think my coming attack, now we're getting close to the, ooh, knight g6 is winning. Right now. Check. Wow, seriously? What did I miss? Oh, queen takes g6. Ah, whoops. Queen takes g6. Using the pin still. Ah, I missed that. Yeah, and now if knight takes a3, rook f1. Check. And if knight f5, I assume queen takes e6. Threatening rook takes f5. So we're going to win the piece back, plus it looks like we just have a winning attack. Honestly. Yeah, wow. If g6 trying to defend, we can just take here. It's inevitable that we're going to take. And the king can't even run because of queen Check. f7 we made on Check h7. Mate. Mm, that was just a blind spot for me. I mean, I went for this position kind of thinking like, okay, if I get here, I'm going to do one of two things. Either I'm going to calculate a win, probably involving knight g6, or I'm just going to think about it for a while, find nothing, and play bishop b4. Um, and ultimately, I couldn't yeah. resist playing knight g6, so I spent four moves to four minutes to do it. So my instincts were correct, but check. I mean, I can't, in good conscience, play the way that I did in the game. Queen takes e6 because, really, to play knight g6, you've got to see queen takes g6, not e6. Huh. I don't know why this was a blind spot for me, but it was. Yeah, and rook f1's coming, and the main difference is that we're controlling the e8 square. His king can never bail to that square when our queen's sitting on g6. Ouch. Yep. Knight e3 is, according to the computer, the best defense, trying to control the f1 square, but then queen takes e6. This is still a little bit messy. I mean, I wouldn't look at this position if I were calculating it in my head and say it's plus 13 for white. I guess it is winning because... um. He just has a hard time moving. I'm not even threatening anything immediately, but I have ideas like rook e1 to drive away the knight so I can get to f1, or maybe rook c1, threatening stuff like bishop takes e7, queen takes e7, rook c8 check. Yeah, like if g6, as the computer is saying, rook c1 should win. Rook g7, rook c8, beautiful. Excellent use of pins. The knight can't take because of the strong bishop pinning uh, to their king. And if queen takes, we just Check. take here. Winning a decisive amount of material. Well, yeah, queen takes g6 would have been a good way to cap off this attack. But as played, after queen takes e6, he takes a3. He takes check. on a3. Rook check. King e8. Yeah, and if I took here... I think there's multiple good moves for him, but um, I was thinking even just uh, like knight back to c4. Because if ever check. I check here, king d7, he runs away. And the c-file is even covered now, so if check. I play like e6, he's just going to skirt away with this king. But there might even be better moves like h takes g6, yeah, queen d7 also. That's a good point that the computer's making. Again, if I check f7, he's going to play king d8 and get over to the queen side. I have no follow-up. This knight on e7 really controls everything, especially the g8 square. So just out of inertia, I tried... Oh yeah, and the other line was h takes g6 that I was thinking about, threatening queen f7 mate. Uh, but king e8, once again, 
and Check. queen f7 here. I'm just losing. I'm going to be down two knights. Oops. Sorry about that. Didn't mean to go that far forward. Um, so after this, Check. and then the rook into f7, he played queen d7, but yeah, I think rook f8 was the move I was most concerned about. Just looking for a trade. And there's ways I can I can try to keep this going, like rook takes g7, but a few accurate defensive moves should suffice, and safeguarding his king, and he's uh, going to be winning with all this extra material. Or if h takes g6, yeah, you can even take here. I saw this line during the game. Pawn Check. takes, king f8, everything's defended. And if queen Check. takes, king d7 once again. But fortunately for me, he played queen d7 right away, maybe in a bit of a hurry to simplify. And then after rook Check. takes e7, queen takes, Check. I take here. I'm not sure what's going Check. on now. I take on g6 at the end of this variation. And the computer claims dead equality. I would rather be white here, I think, now, especially having played it. I mean, his knight is not coordinating well with his queen. And I've got these two passed pawns in the center. Um, if the time situation were the same, I'd definitely rather be white. With the time situation, him still having like a three and a half minute advantage, three minute advantage, um, it's, a, it's a closer call. Probably a draw is the correct result. I think the chances for a perpetual are pretty high. Check. Yeah, and here he made a mistake with queen d7, allowing this queen c4 move, and suddenly queen g8 is an idea. So if he had played king d8 instead, I probably would have done the same thing, though. Queen here. Although, okay, in this case, yeah, Check. I can't win this pawn. King comes up, and he remains defending the g7 pawn. So king d8 would have been best for him. And maybe queen check. g5 check. He has to avoid the c-file probably. Like if king c7, check. queen c4 wins the knight. So just back here. Yeah, if I check g8, he comes here. So it's crucial for him to keep his queen defending the g7 pawn, I think is the main thing. And a perpetual should result with best play. But after queen c4, he might be losing. He tried to save the knight. The computer thinks he's got to pitch the knight. King d8. Queen takes c2, take on d4, and hope to draw. But um, he pitched the, Check. the g pawn instead. Check. But now my g pawn is just too dangerous. Check. Yep, g7, and last minute threat, queen takes g2, so I can't queen. But Check. this takes care of business. Forcing the queen, Check. queen trade with tempo. Then we promote for the victory. That was a fun one. Um, I think. I made some good instinctive decisions here, like realizing that I could sack the c-pawn and have enough play, but I needed to follow it up precisely. Like a good example of that is the strength of this queen d2, queen f4 maneuver. Not something I really consider, but when you stack material, you often have to follow up aggressively and precisely like that. As played, I think Magic Knight did a good job of defending. However, it appears that um, after knight c4, this Check. knight g6 move is winning. I just needed to see queen takes g6 in this position. So I, I guess from his point of view, that means in this position, he needs to find a better move. Yeah, king e8. Not knight c4 attacking the bishop. Not the natural move. But king e8 getting out of the pins. And in this case, I don't have enough for the material, probably. Yeah, getting out of that pin solves a lot of issues for black. It completely takes the sting out of knight g6. So my knight is likely to just be bad on this square. And I don't have enough for the pawn. I'm not lost, but black is probably better now. Check. Yeah, and then later on he Check. could have played better in defense. Yeah, rook f8 here would have been just winning. Check. All right, hope you guys enjoyed this one. I'll be back tomorrow with another video. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye.